Frampton Nuttall. I'm staying at the inn, and my sister gave me this letter of introduction to Mrs. Sappleton. <laughs> the doctor insisted I take a rest in the country, and my sister... Presently, Mr. Nuttall. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. Yes, well, I'm sure it will be a pleasure. Do you know many of the people around here? Hardly a soul. My sister was staying here at the rectory, you know, some four years ago, and she gave me letters of introduction to some of the people here. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt? Only her name and address. A great tragedy happened just three years ago. That would be since your sister's time. A tragedy? You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon. Well, I did think it a bit peculiar, but has that window anything to do with a tragedy? Out through that window. Three years ago to a day. A husband and brother went off for the day shooting. They never came back. In crossing the moor to the favorite snipe shooting ground, they were both engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog. It had been that dreadful wet summer, you know. Places that were safe in other years gave way suddenly without warning. Their bodies were never recovered. That was the dreadful part of it. 
poor Aunt Toy seems to feel come back home someday. They and that little brown spaniel that was lost with them. And walk in at this window just as they used to do. That is why the window is kept open every evening till it's quite dusk. Poor dear aunt. She's often told me how they went out. Her husband with his Macintosh over his arm and Ronnie, her brother, singing Bertie, Why'd You Bound? as he always did to tease her because she said it got on her nerves. get a creepy feeling that they'll all walk in through that window. I am so sorry to have kept you waiting. It was most ungracious of me. Do sit down. I hope Vera has been amusing you. She has been very interesting. Please, sit down. I hope you don't mind the open window. My husband and brother will be home directly from shooting, and they always come in this way. They've been out for snipe in the marshes today, so they'll make a fine mess over my poor carpets. So like you men folk, isn't it? I don't know why they insist on wallowing about in the marshes when everyone knows there are no snipe to be had this fall. I'm not a sportsman myself. I'm told we should have an abundance of duck this winter. I'm uh, here for my health, actually. Oh? Had a rather bad case of nerves. Uh, the doctors agree in ordering me complete rest, an absence of mental excitement, and the avoidance of anything in the nature of violent physical activity. On the matter of diet, they are not so much in agreement. No? Here they are at last, just in time for tea. And don't they look as if they were muddy up to the eyes? Why do you bow? without a word of goodbye or apology when you arrive. One would think he'd seen a ghost. I expect it was a spaniel. He told me he had a horror of dogs. He was once hunted into a cemetery somewhere along the banks of the Ganges by a pack of pariah dogs and had to spend the night in a newly dug grave with the creature snarling and grinning and foaming just above him. Enough to make anyone lose their nerve. 